Okay guys, by the end of this video, you will know exactly how long it's gonna take you to get six pack abs and what you can do to absolutely guarantee to make sure that it happens, okay? Because the biggest change that you need to make has nothing to do with uh, working out or how many uh, calories that you eat in a day. Those things are important, don't get me wrong, but they're nowhere near as important as something else which I'll talk about afterwards okay now when i first started training i used to think all the time how long is it going to be until i can finally see my apps okay so i know how it feels i will throw an image on screen if i've got one of me with no abs okay now having got abs i can tell you right now that anyone can do it literally anyone can do it it's not rocket science and when you know how it's actually very easy so in this video I'm going to break it all down down for you, keep it nice and simple, so you're going to know exactly what you need to do, exactly how long it's going to take you, and what you really need to focus on to absolutely guarantee that it happens, okay? So the first point that I want to make is that everyone has a six-pack, okay? Absolutely everyone. I have a six-pack, you have a six-pack, your nan has a six-pack, everyone's already got a six-pack, but... If you can't see your six pack right now, um, and don't get me wrong, you know, there are genetics at play. Some people have a better looking six pack than others. Some people's are more defined, and just more uh, symmetrical. But if you can't even see your six pack right now, it's because there's too much body fat in the way. So the good news is you already have a six pack. The bad news is we can't see it yet because there's fat in the way. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to lose the fat, okay? How do we lose the fat? Good question. Okay, so now it becomes down to a question of fat loss. So a good goal to have for fat loss is one pound per week. I will talk about in a minute how we can speed this up, but a good sustainable option is one pound per week. And the reason why I like that is for most people, unless you get very, very lean, you can sustain that. And it's a bit like the question between, uh, you know, the story between the tortoise and the hare. When it comes to anything to do with fitness, whether it's building muscle, losing fat, uh, if you're trying to get in the best shape of your life, look, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, it's going to take some time. I know, I know right now, that's not the answer you want to hear. You want to be told, oh, I can just do this and boom, you wake up the next day, you get a six pack. But look guys, if it was that easy, everyone would have a six pack and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be a thing. It wouldn't be desired just because everyone has one, but not everyone has one. Okay. And that's why it's desirable. But if you can have a little bit of patience, if you can play the long game and be the tortoise, not the hare, okay, play the long game and stay the course, you're going to have a much better chance of getting there in the first place, okay? So that's the mindset thing that I need you to understand coming into this, okay? So there's three things that you need to do, just three things. And the first one is nutrition. We couldn't make, I couldn't make a video talking about six pack and fat loss without talking about nutrition, okay? Nutrition is the most important step apart from something I'm gonna talk about at the end, okay? So with regards to your nutrition, first things first, you need to be in a calorie deficit, okay? <laughs> because if you're not in a calorie deficit, your body won't get rid of the fat and you won't be able to see your abs, okay? So first of all, we need to be in a calorie deficit. How can we make sure we're in a calorie deficit? Well, you need to work out how many calories you're currently burning every single day okay and the way you can estimate this this is not going to be perfect but this is a, will provide a good starting point for you is you can go onto google and you can google um calorie estimator or something like that and what you'll do is you'll put in your uh height weight age uh, acti estimated activity level maybe there's an estimated body fat percentage as well depending on which one you choose okay and that's going to give you your total calories for the uh, total calories for the day. Okay. So then from that, what you want to do is you can work out how much 
uh, from from that you want to minus say 300 calories 300 to 500 I would start at 300 okay a 300 calorie deficit from that so say if it comes out at 3000 we minus 300 off now I'm at 2700 so I know I've got 2700 calories to eat in a day next thing you want to do is you want to spread those calories over three or four meals okay for most people I found most of the time three or four meals is fine can you do it in two sure you can is it less optimal i think so can you do it in five yeah of course you can as well but that just means more meals it's more hassle it's harder to adhere to for most people i have found three to four meals to be the sweet spot okay so you want to make sure you're having for your macros we'll just touch on that for a second one gram a pound of body weight for your protein okay so you work out your protein first so if i weigh 200 pounds that's going to mean i'm going to have 200 grams of protein per day okay then we work out the calories from that which is just times it by four okay so that will be 800 calories we minus 800 off the 2700 calories so you're at, uh what 1900 calories if my math is correct okay so we've got 1900 calories left then you want to do your fats okay now this can vary but what as a kind of like minimum that i say to most people is 0.3 grams per pound of body weight for your fats okay so if i weigh 200 pounds well that's going to be 0.3 which will be uh 60 i think it's about 60 grams of fat per day okay and then uh to work out the calories for that you times it by nine so that's like 540 okay so we had 1900 left minus 540 if i'm losing you here don't worry about this uh it, you you can just send me a message and i'll i'll send you the calculation it's actually very simple but you know we're looking at maybe like 1200 calories left which can come from carbohydrates uh something like that anyway uh the point is you work out your protein first then your fats, and then you fill the rest of the calories that you have remaining with your carbohydrates. And that's how you handle your macros, okay? So we're splitting it across three or four meals. Uh, we know your protein, we know your fats, we know your carbohydrates. Um, also, I wanna talk about whole foods. Make sure you're eating real foods, guys. And the best way that I can explain this is, um, ask yourself, did it run on the ground? Did it grow in the ground? Did it swim in the sea or did it fly in the air? So if it did, eat it. If it didn't, don't eat it. For example, for my diet, a lot of it is meat, fish, eggs, fruit, honey, um, maybe sometimes some white rice or some easily digestible like, uh, you know, potato, sweet potato, uh, uh, white potato you know, any easily digestible carbohydrates. That's pretty much 80 to 90% of what I eat. If you just stick to that, you're good because it's gonna fill you for longer. A lot of processed foods are also bad for your health. And the more unhealthy you are, the more inflammation you're gonna have. And inflammation causes uh, water, intercellular water retention under the skin. So it's also gonna affect how you look as well. So that's another reason to be healthy as well as, uh, you know, being a calorie deficit so you can look good okay it's not just about looking but looking good we also want to feel good as well right okay so that's your nutrition box stuff but you have to make sure you're training correctly and you're doing the right sorts of training because it's gonna make this hell, hell, hell of a lot easier for number one but also number two is you can actually train them to bring them out so you've just got more aesthetic abs because some people even though they're really skinny you can barely see the abs and for those types of people you need to make sure you're training them uh, just so they can just be bigger and just more defined, right? Okay, so with regards to training, there's two exercises that I like to do. Um, there's, there's a lot of different exercises, but I would say the two main ones are, number one is, first of all, when it comes to training abs, your lower abs down here, like the bottom two, are the hardest to get. So we want, whenever we're training abs, we actually want to prioritize them. And what I like to do is a hanging leg raise, or hanging knee raise, sorry. Hanging knee raise is good. If you can do them, hanging leg raise is also good. Uh, if, you, if you struggle with both of those exercises, 
You can do a, a machine where it's your assisted on your elbows. I will try and put uh, an image on screen to describe what I'm talking about. But you can, instead of hanging from above, you can actually hang, uh, you can actually be supporting yourself with pads under your elbows and you can do knee, knee raises like that. Pretty much anyone can do them. It's a very easy exercise to do. Uh, when you're doing this exercise or the other one that I'm about to talk about, when you contract, you want to make sure you breathe out and really feel the contraction and contract your abs hard. It's very important that you execute the exercise correctly. Otherwise, you're just not going to make any gains. OK, so that is the first exercise. The second exercise that I like to do is some you need some kind of crunch in there as well. So we've got some kind of leg raise. We need some kind of crunch, which is going to target uh, the other four abdominals um the my favorite for this is actually a rope crunch so you know you got your cables put put your cables at the top get some kind of um attachment a rope or something short and kneel on the floor and then you just crunch down like this i'll put an image on screen or video or something to describe what i'm talking about Okay, but they're my two favorite exercises. If you don't do any other training directly for your abs, but you just do these two exercises, even just twice a week, it will make, and you do it properly, it will make a big difference, okay? But on top of that, uh, we gotta talk about cardio. Now, I'm gonna say right now that you do not have to do cardio to get abs. I know loads of people, including myself, manage to get cardio without getting abs. It's not necessary. Does it help? Sure. But it's not needed what's more important than cardio is daily steps and daily movement every single day i go for a beach walk twice a day I go for a beach walk in the morning i go for a beach walk uh, after sunset uh, i'm not i'm i mean that's going to contribute to fat loss somewhat but i'm actually doing that more for health reasons than i am for like training purposes but it's still it's great for the mind it's great for the body uh, i've made videos about this in the past but uh, honestly walking is the best exercise for fat loss so cardio is optional walking and steps is not optional because it's a great way to increase movement and increase daily calorie expenditure without really increasing your appetite that much or without increasing the stress on the body so walking is super super underrated especially if you can do it outside uh, especially if you can be barefoot connected to the ground as well obviously that's not going to be possible for everyone depending on where you live but if you can do that and you can get ground at the same time that's going to be really beneficial for your health okay if you do want to do cardio or if you don't want to do cardio you struggle with cardio but you wish you could do cardio something else that you can do is fitness classes this is something that i do at the moment i'm doing fitness classes three times a week i'm doing high rocks at the minute and um, fitness classes, if you can find some good quality fitness classes in your area, uh, it's just going to make doing cardio so much easier. OK, because for me, getting on a treadmill inside a gym or riding on a bike, a stationary bike in a gym, I just can't motivate myself to do it. I can't think of anything worse, actually. It just feels so boring. It feels like a waste of time. I'd much rather be outside, at least. Uh, you're walking in the fresh air, in nature. Um, but these classes, they make it very easy to, all you got to do is just got to show up there and you've just got to do what they tell you to do. And because you're in a group and everyone's doing it, you're not going to like uh, not do it, okay? Because then you just look stupid, <laughs> okay? So it's a really good way, especially if you struggle with motivation, to do fitness classes, especially for your cardio, okay? So if you do have access to uh, good fitness classes in your area, that can be a nice little hack to help you... Uh, get those six pack abs. And one last thing I want to talk about is you want to microdose movement throughout the day. So there'll be many times throughout the day where I will be on the phone and I'll just, I'll just walk around here or I'll just walk around there. Or um, what I used to do when I used to watch TV is in between like a commercial breaks, I used to do some sit-ups or some press-ups. This is when I'm a kid. I don't really watch TV anymore right now. Or for example, uh, when I was making meals in the kitchen and I was waiting for something to cook, I would just do dips on the uh, on the corner, corner counter. Okay, so I'd have a counter here, counter here. I would just do dips. I'm always throughout the day just looking for opportunities just to sneak some uh, 
just sneak some extra movement in somehow without really providing much stress. Like a lot of people, they have the mindset of, oh yeah, I do my exercise when I'm at the gym and that's it. But that's only one hour out of your day. You've still got 23 hours. And if you're stationary or sedentary for those 23 hours and you only have one hour where you're doing exercise, it's going to be very, very difficult for you um, to be in a calorie deficit versus someone like myself who's just doing walks all the time, even when I'm on phone calls, even after meals, I'm just walking around for a bit. That's another good point, actually, is a 10-minute walk after each meal aids digestion. And the better you digest and assimilate your foods, uh, the better bo body composition you're going to have. Okay, so 10-minute walk after a meal is super, super beneficial. It's great for insulin sensitivity. It's great for nutrition par partitioning. Uh, I highly, highly recommend a 10 minute walk after a meal. Okay, so that's your nutrition and your training. But if you don't do this one thing, then you're likely gonna go end up off course, okay? Because the problem is you see yourself every single day. You're probably looking in the mirror 20 times a day <laughs> or something like that, okay? Uh, you might not even be weighing yourself every single morning, which you should be doing. So the third point that you need to do is track your progress. This is absolutely critical that you do this do not skip this step because i know some of you are just going to skip it anyway but you shouldn't skip this step okay so every single morning when you wake up go to the bathroom before you drink anything weigh yourself and do this every single morning and there's actually a good app that uh, i recommend you get it's called macro factor okay Let, uh, i'll just show you here uh okay and we can see can you see this this is the macro factor and you can track your weight on there as well. Okay, you can also use it to track um, your macros. But here we can see that my weight has been trending down for the month. Okay. Uh, and yeah, for the month, I've lost 1.3 kg. But every single morning, weigh yourself and you put it, record it somewhere. I'd recommend this app to be honest. It is paid, but it doesn't cost much. I don't even know how much it costs, but it, it's not that much. Okay, put your weight in here and it will calculate uh, the average over time. So I can see in the last three days, I've gained 0.2 kg. In the last seven days, I've lost 0.2 kg. In the last 14 days, I've lost 0.6 kg, etc., etc. Okay, so make sure, you, first of all, that you're tracking your weight every single day and you take an average. This app already does it for you, but if you're not using this app, you want to average it out. So every single week you get an average over the seven days and then you, you want to see that your scale weight is trending down. But do not rely on the scale weight alone because it can be um, not always a true representation of what actually is going on. Sometimes your weight can go up, but your body composition looks better. Okay, so don't rely on the scale weight alone. Also, you want to rely on how you actually look. Okay, so you want to make sure you're doing progress photos. You want to take a photo straight on from the side and from the back. And you want to do this same time, same place, same lighting every single week. Okay, ideally first thing in the morning in natural light. Okay, and if you do that, as, as well as the, uh, you're tracking your weight, now you've got a good measuring stick as to whether you're on track or whether you need to adjust things, okay? And if you're not losing weight and your body composition is not improving, then you know, okay, I need to put my calories down. So say if you were 2,700, maybe you need to come down to 2,500 and stick it there for a while. And eventually, if you lose weight at 2,500, eventually you will plateau and then you just bring your calories down again. But if you're still losing weight at 2,500, do not bring your calories down lower yet. Wait until you plateau, wait until your weight stays the same. And then you've got a choice. You can either bring your calories lower or you can increase the amount of movement that you're doing. Maybe you can do an extra 2,000 steps or uh, you can do some extra movement throughout the day, okay? So that is, let me go, go back to here. The three steps that uh, you need to do to make sure that you uh, get six pack, okay? Now, you're probably wondering, how long is this gonna take you? Well, the real answer is, it depends, because it depends on how fat you are. And I can't see you, so I can't tell you that, but I will give you some 
rough estimates. These are extremely rough because it, it really comes down to you and your adherence to this and how serious you want to take this and also um you know how lean you actually want to get because there's a difference between having visible abs and being absolutely shredded to the bean okay so your goal is going to dictate you know how long this is going to take you but as a general rule of thumb i've said like 10 percent body fat so if you're at 40 percent body fat right now and i'll put an image on screen of someone who's around 40 percent to get to 10 percent you're looking at probably somewhere between one and two years okay if you're at 30 percent and you want to get down to 10 percent you're probably looking at somewhere between six to 12 months okay and if you're at 20 percent and you want to get down to 10 percent i reckon about three to six months now you're probably thinking james this is ridiculous i just want to click off this you've not told me what i want to hear i want to be told that it's just going to be done in four weeks well guess what it's not going to be done in four weeks okay rome wasn't built in a day and neither will your physique okay this is going to take time but there are some things you can do to speed this up and the most the most obvious one that you can do is to just have a bigger calorie deficit okay so if you've been having a deficit of 300 calories per day, put it to 500, put it to 600. But just know that the steeper the calorie deficit is, the harder it's going to be for you to stick to it. The, the more miserable you're going to be, uh, just the more your quality of life is going to be impacted. And on top of that, the more likely you are to lose muscle. Okay, so I know you want to go fast. But I would highly recommend that you just aim for one pound per week. If you're at 40% body fat, it's fine. You can lose two pounds per week, no problem. But as soon as you start to come down to, say, like uh, 20% body fat and you want to get down to 10%, you're looking at a pound a week, okay, to be safe and to actually not be miserable and actually enjoy your life, okay? But now the real issue with asking... um you know, how long is it going to take to get six pack abs is it reveals to me that you're kind of thinking the wrong way. OK, because you're already thinking about the finish line. And if you're already thinking about the finish line, you've already lost because it's not like once you get six pack abs, you can stop doing what you've already done to get there because if you stop doing what you've already done you will just lose the abs okay so it doesn't even make a difference once you get there you're still going to have to continue doing everything you've done to get there okay it's not going to change anything so how long it takes doesn't matter doesn't matter how long it takes right as long as you get there really um what you should be asking yourself is who do i need to become so that um you know what type of person do i need to become so that they have a six pack naturally without even trying because i you probably know some people who just have a six pack all the time they don't even really try and yet yeah, they might they might be a genetic factor at play but i guarantee their diet is different from yours their training is different from yours and overall they're doing things that you're not doing but there are people out there who just naturally do the right thing. For example, for me now, I wasn't always this way, but now it would be very hard for me to not have a six pack because uh, just my my life on uh, like o o almost like on autopilot, I'm just automatically doing the right thing. I'm automatically going for walks. I'm automatically walking around when I'm on the phone. I'm automatically just going to the gym every single day because I enjoy it, not because I really need a six pack, okay? So, become the person who naturally has a six pack without even trying and that is how you will absolutely guarantee that you get a six pack okay it's really it's really it's that simple that and that way you'll not only get a six pack but you'll keep it too which is you know half which is more important because there'd be nothing worse than getting a six pack and you see this with people who get in shape you know maybe they hire a coach maybe they work really hard they get in the best shape of their lives they go on holiday and then they just stop training and they just lose all the gains and they just look like crap again. Okay. I don't want that to happen to you. So I hope this video helps. If you need help with any of this, you want to get a six pack 
you want to get in the best shape of your life, I do coaching. You can send me a DM on Instagram or X. Or if you've got any questions in this video that you're not sure about, you can also send me a DM. I'll be happy to help as well. Uh, all the links will be in the description. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Get those abs strong, and I'll see you in the next one.